So I apologise for this a little bit late. Missed the uh, if you commented on Spanner Marshall's uh, debut. Just want to get your thoughts specifically on her takedown defence there. And did you want to see more take on take on offence from her, considering she's come from the boxing world, she's been learning the MMA side. So did you want to see that part of offence there tonight? I honestly don't think I did, know. What I wanted to see from Savannah is her ability to utilize her phenomenal boxing skills in MMA. You know, we know how tremendous a punching power that she's got. And in the four-ounce gloves, you know, it makes her even more dangerous. What I don't want is someone just now all of a sudden think, I've got all these MMA skills and I'm going to start throwing them at my opponent. Now, what I will say is if Savannah wants to come out and show her MMA skills against Clarissa Shields, I think that'd be very interesting because we could see a grappling match between two of the best boxers in, in you know in women's uh, boxing. But I thought she showed a really, really good performance today across mixed martial arts. Yeah, she got taken down a couple of times, but straight away she's overhooking, she's building frames, she's building herself back up to her feet. You know, she was able to defend that arm triangle, which was very, very tight at one point. And, you know, I could see her corner team were concerned. They're like, they in the corner, you know, like there was a very, very tight arm, uh, arm triangle and she knew what to do to get out of it. That gives me a lot of confidence that she's doing the right things in the gym. And ultimately, it's going to get to the stage where she's going to want to show people her other skills. She keeps saying the same thing to me. I can't wait to choke Clarissa out. So I think that might be the first time we're going to see her really show her mixed martial arts game against her old rival. Who had the better debut, Savannah or Clarissa? Savannah. Who do you, who do you favour in the fight now that you've seen both of them? Uh, it's a good question. You see, the thing is, Clarissa's got that head start and she showed good submission defense in her last fight. You know, she's now starting to really find her range with her boxing. But for me, Savannah's already got that range in mixed martial arts for her boxing. I could see that with her footwork. She wasn't crowding her work. Clarissa crowded her work a little bit in her last fight. I didn't see Savannah do that at all. Now, of course, different opponents, we're going to get different, re diff different reactions, different results. But I, I was saying it, and I've said it to a bunch of you guys as well. Savannah's style of boxing is far more suited to mixed martial arts than a lot of other boxers because she's heavy front foot, she's a power puncher, and she's aggressive. But I can see her easily transitioning to mixed martial arts and maintaining a lot of the same boxing skills that she's got. And now we've seen her with her submission defense, with her scrambling ability. It's going to give her more confidence to let her hands go. And when she starts finding those body shots that we were seeing when she was boxing, you can't take a four ounce glove to the, to the liver and stay standing. Thanks. All good. Thank you so much, guys. We really appreciate you coming and supporting us. Thank you. Thank you. Kershed is going to show the, thing, the level of PFL Europe is consistent. And he's going to have to fight really hard to get that belt back again. So, you know, another year in PFL Europe, a bit more experience. He might be ready to take two belts and become the first fighter on the, the global battle weight division. And the last one, so you mentioned Patrick Amorado as well. That's the last one, so he's on air. What's the situation there? Is he still with PFL? Is he still in New Jersey? Or what's going on? Patrick's fought with the PFL now. He's always going to be a part of the PFL family. And you know, Aries is a great show. My wife will be commentating on his fights on Aries as well, so I'll be looking forward to that. Look, Patrick's a very, very special fighter. He's right at the beginning of his career. We'll see him in the PFL cage again. I know that. I know that for sure. And I'm looking forward to seeing him with those gloves on again because, my goodness, when he lets his hands go, it's scary. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not against any of these things. I'm, you know, I'm a no no politics kind of guy. Like, I don't mind people moving from one bit, one uh, organization to another. That for me, I just want to see the best fights, right? If, if there's another organization out there that wants to pit their champions against ours, then. I, I don't see why we wouldn't consider that. I'm confident with our roster. I'm confident with our roster against any fighters in the world, no matter what, what uh, organization they're with. Um, and I think the more we develop, the more we grow, the more fighters we recruit to the PFL, the more those conversations are going to open up because it gives us more strength in the marketplace. Where are you finding your fans? Yeah, we were, we were talking to Saladin. Look, you know, he's got such a good fan base in Poland. It's difficult to take people out of that. You know, they have to really want to leave that that you know that uh, uh, environment where they are a superstar. Saladin Parnas is an absolute superstar. He's a very very dangerous fighter. But 
the thing is with Pierre Perry, you know, I mean, we've seen it with Dubé, right? We've had a couple of fights with him in, in, in France. He's going to be moving outside of France soon. The world wants to see Cedric Dubé. But these fighters need to want to go outside and fight for fans around the world. If you get stuck in the same spot and you keep fighting the same, you know, I don't know. I, I, I just like Gamrock, for example, right? Gamrock could have decided to stay with KSW and make loads and loads of money because he didn't want to. He wants to find that platform where he could get that notoriety. That's ultimately what I'm looking for. I want fighters that want to be world champions. They want to tell everybody in the world that they're the best and take on all comers. And I'm hoping at some point we get some of these to come over and join us. But right now, he's got a home with KSW, and I'll just enjoy his fights over there as a fan for right now. Hopefully one day. Thanks. Man, look, he's on a he's on a very very fast track. The challenge really is going to be finding opponents for him. Like you know, Josh Reed's an incredibly tough individual. Most people wouldn't want to step in and fight someone like Ebro. I've got a few ideas in my mind of who I'm going to call to try and match him up against next, and they are very, very strong grapplers, great takedown defense. So we're going to be challenging him. I'm going to see what his undefeated record looks like in, in you know six months' time, and that will determine how fast he becomes a world champion. But ultimately, it's in his destiny. I think we can all agree with that. He's a special fighter. And uh, you have a friend called uh, yep. So, inside my gym at home, you, most of you would have seen my gym on my on my uh, on my Instagram. I have a load of whiteboards out of the spot that you don't see, and I've got names and names of fighters whose name is on that list. He's been on that list for a while, and there's quite a few amateurs on there as well that I'm looking to sign as soon as they're ready to step up. Oh right. Pass on my number. Let's sort that out. Awesome. Hey, what?